question, I pray tonight, bless us with knowledge and understanding so that we understand each and everything our church is going to teach us. I pray all this living and trusting in your son, Jesus Christ, I've prayed. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Now, uh, I think you can see that uh, the lesson has already started. Yeah. And uh, today's lesson is going to mainly, we are still continuing with our flowers. Uh, so that we can end with flowers. Yeah, it's a little bit a long subtopic, but we have been able to move. Now, last week, we were able to look at um, uh, the different types of flowers. We saw, uh, we saw the hibiscus flower. We were able to also see the maize flower, the grass flowers. And then we were able to know the four floral holes, which included the calyx, corolla, gynoesium, and androesium. We were able to look at the different types of pistils and types of ovaries where we had superior ovary and inferior ovary. We looked at some terms as, that look at, that we use in flowers. And then um, we're also able to look at pollination. I think we ended with the pollination, if you still remember, whereby we looked at uh, insect pollinated flowers. Uh, I think we ended with agents of pollination. Uh, if I remember very well, this is where we ended. And today, we can now look at uh, characteristics of insect pollinated flowers. You know that uh, insect pollinated flowers, one, most of them are going to be brightly colored. It doesn't have to be which color, which color, because it could be purple, it could be pink, it could be white, it could be, as long as it's a bright color. And that quite bright color is for yes. attracting insects. Uh, Fiona, you have a question? Agava Fiona, your hand is up, you have a question? Okay. Um, so they also have a scent. When you smell them, they have a very nice scent. And again, that scent is to attract uh, insects as well as birds. They have large conspicuous. Now this word conspicuous means something that is easily visible by the eyes. Like you can easily see that is conspicuous. It is broad, big, and you can easily see. So which act as learning sites for insects? They also have sticky pollen grains because once you see this insect, this is a butterfly. If it comes around, this, the pollen grains, these yellow, yellow structures, they will stick onto the uh, body of this uh, butterfly. Once it goes to another flower, of course it will have to take the pollen grains and then pollination occurs. They have few sticky pollen grains. They, they produce heavy pollen grains. And then they produce nectar uh, from nectaries to attract insects. So they, they can be able to produce nectar. I said that whenever an insect looks at them, it will know that there is something sweet inside that flower. So it will keep on wanting to go there. So those are characteristics of insect, insect pollinated flowers. But how about windy pollinated flowers? One thing to take note of them is that they have dull color. Most of them are gonna be green. Green is a dull color. And you can see uh, in your right corner, upper corner, this is uh, a flower of the piggy weed, Amaranthus, all in Uganda is called Dodo. That's how the flower looks like. Here, this is a flower of grass, of sobi, grass, okay? Uh, even this one is grass. You see, these are their flowers. Some of you never knew that these were actually flowers, and I know you've interacted with them, but these are actually uh, their flowers. They are dull colored. They have small petals. You can imagine 
uh, this is the petal, <laughs> this thing here, uh, the petal of this flower. They have small petals. They produce light pollen grain. You can see. Uh, then we can easily be carried by wind. They do not produce nectar. Have you ever tasted nectar of uh, a grass flower? No. They have feathery stigma. You can see this is an example of a feathery uh, stigma. You can see it looks like feathers. They look like feathers. You can see them. They look like feathers. And they produce a lot of pollen grains. You can see like in this picture. And they have no scent. They have long stamens. This is the stamen of this grass flower. You can see that they, uh, they even project outward. This is the stamen uh, of it. And then uh, they have long stamens and pistils hanging outside the petals. You can see that these are stamen and pistil hanging out of the petal. All these are characteristics of wind pollinated flowers, those that are pollinated by wind. Now for a typical wind pollinated flower, whenever you think about it, this should be the picture to come in your mind. First of all, the petals will be small, they will have feathery stigma, like you can see here. Uh, these things that you see, if you look at this picture here, okay, let me get an eraser so that you are able to see clearly. Uh, those structures which look like small, small hairs, that is the stigma. That is the stigma. But now uh, here it is, it is drawn. Uh -huh, this is the stigma. Uh, which you have looked at here in this case. And then the, the anthers are exposed to the wind so that pollen can easily be blown. Now, these are the anthers in the real picture. This is an anther head. Even this one, they're exposed so that uh, the pollen grains can easily be blown. So pollen grains are very, very small and lightly occur in very large numbers. You can't see them clearly and innocent or nectar. So these are the, this is a typical wind pollinated flower, which you must know, okay? And then uh, these are more of the wind pollinated flowers. For some of you have never seen them. Uh, this is one of the hostel. Uh, these are grass flowers. These are, these are flowers, by the way, for some of you who had never noticed uh, that these were flowers. This is also a flower. Uh, these are flower. This is a, of a nut sage, okay. And you can see this pink, this purple, purple stuff. These are actually anther heads, and those hair-like structures are the stigma, and those small, small structures are the petals. So those are more pictures of the wind pollinated flowers. Uh, for more, uh, the, uh, these are wind pollinated. You can see this is a feathery stigma. And then this is uh, an anther head, which is hanging out. Now, these ones are is the ones below EFG. Uh, these ones are, uh, are insect pollinated. You can see that their petal, petals are conspicuous and big with nectar guides. Uh, they are open, broad. They have broad petals. They're brightly colored to attract insects. So you should be able to, uh, to be able to identify them as whether it is insect pollinated or wind pollinated. Now, um, if you have understood uh, the wind pollinated and insect pollinated, can you by a show of hands, I need people to, to give me a few differences between wind pollinated flowers and insect pollinated flowers. You can raise your hand. I choose you. Yes, Carman can. Insect pollinated flowers produce nectar. While wind pollinate, pollinated what? While wind pollination, they don't produce nectar. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Can. Uh, yes, Maureen. Yeah, better. Pollinated flowers have bright petals and wind pollinated flowers have dull petals. 
Thank you, Maureen. Uh, how about Isabella? Insect pollinated flowers have few pollen grains, while wind pollinated flowers have a lot of pollen grains. Thank you very much, Isabella. Uh, Rebecca? Rebecca Winnie? Rebecca Winnie, your own, please tell us uh, one difference. All grace, one a pie. The, the stamen, the stamen of the wind pollinated flowers are longer than the stamen of the insect pollinated flowers. Okay, yeah, you could think about it. Okay, thank you. Uh, Linda? Um, teacher, insect pollinated flowers have large petals, while wind pollinated flowers have small petals. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Uboy. Yes, Uboy. Uboy. Boy, yeah. give us your answer, oh boy. Yes. Oh boy has no answer. Yes, Jovia Pavin. Jovia Pavin. Okay, I think uh, people are uh, exhausted. Uh, exhausted. Let me uh, let's go to the next. Um, basically, basically, you've given me all the answers. Insect pollinated flowers have brightly colored petals, the other ones are dull colored. Have a scent, no scent. Produce nectar from nectaries, produce no nectar. Have large petals, have small petals. Produce few pollen grains, produce a lot of pollen grains. Then have sticky stigmas, have a feathery stigma. Produce heavy pollen grains, produce light pollen grains. So people have been able to give me all those differences, okay? Uh, all those differences between the insect pollinated flowers and the wind pollinated flowers. Now going forward, uh, there are some modifications of flowers to prevent self-pollination. Modifications of flowers to prevent full pollination. Uh, one of them, I, and by the way, these are some of the terms. We looked at some of these terms earlier on, where we looked at a term called protandre. Remember, andre comes from androesium, which is the male part of the flower. Now, when you meet a word like protandre, yeah, this is a situation where the stamens ripen before the stigma such that when pollination occurs, the pollen grains cannot germinate on the immature stigma. What does this statement mean? You see, even, even if there were humans, eh, you cannot find a baby producing uh, a, another, eh, you find a baby producing a baby or giving birth. Likewise, in plants, um, they you remember a, a flower because it is a reproductive part of the plant it normally has both the female and the male reproductive parts now if a plant does not want to carry out self-pollination it may decide that uh, it it is the the stigma sorry the stamen which matures first before before the the ant the 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 female part, that is the gynoecium, could ripen. And in that way, there's not going to be okay. any self pollination. In another way, protogyne, look at this word, proto, then gyne, gyne comes from gynoecium, and gynoecium means the female part of the flower. So with the protogyne, it is a situation whereby, is a situation whereby, uh, the male, the female part develops or matures or ripens before the anther. Then I also talked of the dioecious. Di means two, okay? 
Now you're going to find two plants and each one is having one part, one sexual part. So with the wishes condition, this is the condition where a plant bears either the pistillate or staminate, but not both. So for example, in a popo, popo, papaya, or a papari, you find that a papari or a popo will only have either the male, or you find a, a popo plant with only female flowers. You go to another one, like is a purple plant with only male flowers. That is the wishes that you're having two different parts and each one, each plant has only one sexual part, either a female or a male. Then another one is self-incompatibility. To be compatible means that you can, like you match. It is like matching or fitting. Uh, I think you've ever put on clothes whereby, say this is fitting, that fits you well. Now in this thing of incompatibility, this is where the pollen grains from the same flower may fall on the stigma, but they fail to germinate because they are not fitting, okay? That is one way of preventing self-pollination. Then another last one is the structure of the flower whereby sometimes the carpel, that is the female part of the flower, is taller than the stamen. Uh, uh, okay. Is taller than the stamen of the same flower. And in some flowers, the corolla covers the stamens, preventing self-pollination. So this is another, another way. Uh, uh, this is another way. Then going forward, but uh, there's this question which I came across. Uh, it is a question which was examined in Wakisha Mok of 2018. Uh, it was brought in Wakisha Mok of 2018, and I thought it was worth us doing it uh, here in this lesson because. This is what we have just studied. So why, do, why can't we do this? This was 2018 when this question was brought and it is you people are going to give me the answer since we have just studied uh, this part. And it goes by, you are provided with the structure of the flowering plant, study it and answer the following questions. Uh, name the parts labeled A, B and C. Name parts labeled A, B, and C. So I need someone to tell us which part is A. A which part is A? You can raise your hand and you tell us which part is A. I think some of you, when we were learning about this, you thought they are not examinable. They are highly examinable. Yes, Logose, Joanita. Yes, Joan. The answer head. Come again. The answer head. Okay. Uh, Joanita says A is answer head. Do you agree with that, Isabella? But that is sigma. Okay. Thank you, Isabella. This is the feather. Uh, it's going to be feather. Uh, feather stigma. We have just looked at this. Uh, feather stigma. Thank you uh, for that. Uh, uh, then, what about B? Yes, Jovan. The sepal. Come again, Sepo. Jovan. Sepo. Okay, thank you. Do you guys agree with Jovan's answer? Jovan says it is a sepo. Is there any other person with a different alternative or you all agree that it is a sepo? Yes, Maxine. Peto. Ma Maxine says this is a peto. Uh, this is a petal. 
Uh -huh. Thank you very much. And what about C? C, Sherina? Okay, thank you, Sherina. This is the answer. Answer or answer here. So whatever you write, uh, you will be given. Okay. Now, uh, for some of you who 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 would have forgotten, then in the chat box, Maureen says flowers. Isabel says petal is B and C is answer here. That is according to Isabella. Uh, this structure is what we have just studied here, actually, for some of you uh, who came into a bit. This, this is what we have just uh, said. This is a uh, stigma, okay? This is the answer. Uh, this is a petal. This is a structure which we have just studied. And uh, when I was looking through uh, my, my bank, question bank, I found this question had had been examined in Wakisha Mok of 2018. And I think we have been able to answer all this. Uh, so, and each one of them here, actually, each one was going for half a mark, half a mark, half a mark, you see, a half a mark now, uh, we're done with that. Suggest the agent of pollination for the flower. Suggest the agent of pollination uh, for the flower. Cravens. Yes, Cravens. Wind. Okay, uh, thank you very much. The agent is windy. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then uh, here in the chat box, Elijah says wind, and then uh, Isabella is asking, do windy pollinated flowers have sepals? Because I can't see them on the diagram. Uh, that's a good observation, uh, Isabella. Then uh, another question was saying that state the adaptations of the flower for the agent of pollination mentioned in B above. States, uh, you can state the adaptations of the flower for the agent of pollination may mentioned in B above. Uh, yes, Isabella? You can give us one. Feathery stigmas. Um, how is it an adaptation, Isabella? Because when they ask for an adaptation, you identify a feature and how it helps the in the process which you want to talk about. So, Isabella, how are the feathery stigma an adaptation? Yes, Maureen. The Yes, Maureen. The, the, the feather is stigma. The, the, when, the, when the wind blows the, the pollen grains, they, they are attached on the feathery stigmas. Which I was still given my answer. Okay. Has large answer heads which are loosely attached to the filament. Um, your volume is low. Uh, let me choose another person. Ashaba Irene. The light, light answer head. Light pollen grain. Ashaba, I'm not getting you. The light pollen is taken by wind. Okay. Um, maybe some of you, let me clarify this. Actually, uh, most of you, I think, don't know the meaning of the word adaptation. 
Uh, most of you don't know the meaning of the word adaptation. The question is very clear. State the adaptations of, of the flower eh? for the agent of pollination mentioned in B. I don't know whether you get the meaning of that, that question because so far I've not yet gotten anyone answering the question. You are just giving me uh, parts. For example, you say, it has stigma, feathery stigma. Now, how is that an adaptation? I don't know, can I have someone to first explain to us the meaning of the word adaptation? Uh, let us first understand uh, the meaning of the word adaptation. Yes, Jovan. Adaptation is something, is, is a term used to show. Okay, to explain more about something with, with illustrations. Okay, uh, Jovan, can I ask you a question? Yes, sir. Do you have adaptations? Me as a person? Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. Give me one adaptation that you have. I have eyes for seeing. Aha, uh -huh, very good. Like it is some kind of a structure that enables you perform or survive better. You get it? Yes. So uh, mm -hmm. that is what I want people to understand. Now, Jovan, give us one adaptation uh, of this flower for the agent of pollination. It has long, long anthers to enable uh -huh. it to enable the wind throw the point grains on the on the stigma okay thank you very much Jovan uh, yeah long answer heads which are hung outside okay the petals uh, to enable wind blow the point grains easily uh, thank you very much um, Jovan and Maureen says in the chat box that it has large anther heads which are loosely attached to the filament which can be shaken by wind to release pollen grains. Uh -huh. That's uh, actually the best way of putting it. Thank you, Maureen. I hope Jovan you've had. Um, then any other person with another alternative? Because this question needed before uh, needed for yes, Ashaba. Okay, and um, they have long feathery stigmas hanging outside to catch flying pollen grains. Okay, uh, that's not bad as well. Uh, any other because we need four. I don't know hey, whether you guys were paying attention when we are going through adaptations of uh, wind pollinated flowers. In other words, that's what they were asking for. They're asking you for adaptations of wind pollinated flowers. Um, yes, Joanita. I'm, I'm asking a question. Please do ask. Uh um, I'm asking, what, the, what do the other heads do? Like they're long for what? Okay, that one has already been had already been uh, answered by. Uh, let me see here in the chat box. By Maureen. Maureen wrote in the chat box saying that it has a large anther heads which are loosely attached to the filament, which can be shaken by wind to release pollen grains. Um, okay. Then, 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 of course, you can give it two way uh, in terms of releasing, okay? Yes. And then uh, any other person, please, uh, raise your hands or you can type your questions in the chat box. Okay. 
And then Maureen uh, is typing and saying that it has feathery stigma, which provides a large surface area for filtering pollen grains from air. A large, it has feathery stigma, which provides a large surface area for filtering pollen grains from air. Thank you very much, uh, Maureen, for that answer. Uh, so it's a very good one. Uh, yes, Isabella. They have small petals, hence they cannot they cannot be seen by insects. insects. Uh, how is it an adaptation? Isabella, are you there? How is it an adaptation? If the insects cannot see the petals, then they they they. The the wind will, will be able to what to the wind will be able to to pollinate the flowers. Okay, uh, thank you very much. But in most cases, we begin with what uh, is available hmm? because if it, whether they are seen or they are not seen is that the moment wind comes, it will do the job. So we can think, let's think of another. And then Maureen has, is saying that it has long thin filament for holding others outside the flower. I like that answer, long thin filaments for holding the anthers outside the flower. Uh, uh, what about, I, I don't know whether Obi, I'm seeing Obi, yes Obi. OBJ production. Uh, what would be your, your take? Yes. Okay, I think uh, people have forgotten this. Uh, you need to look at hmm, some of these features. Yeah. Okay. You need to look at some of these features. Anthers are exposed to the wind so that pollen can easily be blown away. So what adaptation are there? Longo, are you seeing? How do you name this part that has exposed them? Filament. This is a filament. Filament. So it has a long filament. Uh, which holds the anthers so, so that anthers are exposed to the wind so that points can easily be blown away. You see, the filament is long and loose. Anther is loaded with pollen grain. It dangles loosely from the filament that's exposing the pollen, okay? Uh, stigma is feathery and ideally adapted to catch pollen, okay? Petals are small and green, so there is no need to attract. Now this one, may not be an adaptation so far if i have to first look at i look out at those ones which are very clear and then uh, what about uh, the last question this question says state the conditions that promote cross-pollination in flowers state the conditions that promote cross-pollination uh, in flowers uh, which conditions promotes cross pollination? You can raise your hand and you tell us. I wonder. I don't know the answer. Just <laughs> raise the hand. Uh, raise your hands and you tell us. I'm seeing Maureen's hand is up. Maureen, you have the answer? Or you just forgot the hand up? Mm, the the sm the scent cross sorry no Amorin we are looking at the last question which says state the conditions that promote cross pollination in flowers okay uh, any other person. Yes, Isabella. 
when the stigma is taller than the answer head, than the answers. Okay, uh, that's a very good answer. That is one condition, uh, yes. which we called uh, proton ray, I think. No, no, that, don't, no, that's not how we called it. So that's one answer, That's which is correct. Yes, Stephanie. I've seen Stephanie and she has gone off. Yes, Ashaba Irene. Ashaba, your hand is up. Have people forgotten? So far, Isabella has given us one answer. That is when uh, one of the conditions when the stigma is taller than the anchors, that's one condition that would promote cross pollination. Yes, Joanita Logose. Right. Uh, Joanita. Bright petals. When the flower has bright petals. Mm, but would you think that would promote cross pollination? Uh, how would it promote it? How would it promote it? Yes, uh, say something about it. If they are okay, if they are the same, then then it will be. No, someone has been talking of bright petals that because you're looking at conditions that promote cross pollination, mm -hmm. and you are saying bright petals. How how would they promote cross pollination? As in when the, when the petals are bright, it attracts the, the pollinators like bees and all others. They come to the flower, like from this flower to the other flower, you know, cross pollination. Thank you very much. Yeah, that, okay, that, that is correct. Uh, yes, Lana, yes, Lana. Yes, teacher. When when a when a certain flower has only one reproductive part system. Okay, hey, that is also correct. The woman has one. That is the dioecious condition. Okay. Um. How about so far? We have so far given three. We need the fourth one because you can see, uh, there were four marks. Twenty eighteen. No more. Sorry, this is the paper. Uh, any other? Revising. Yes, Ashaba, Irene, your hand is up. I don't know whether I just forgot it. Yes, Krabbins. 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 Okay, let me angel and group. Yes, angel. Uh, when I ask you to animate, you animate very fast and you give us the answer. Excuse me, teacher. Yes. Teacher, when when the the flower has light anther heads, light light pollen grains. Mm -hmm. When the anther has light pollen grains, how does that promote cross pollination? The light pollen grains are easily blown off by the wind. Okay, uh -huh. that is. Uh... Uh, that can also promote. Hey, thank you very much. Hey, to large, to, to greater distances. Hey, those point green. Thank you, uh, Irene. Um, is there any other that we have left out? By the way, if you take note of, um, we had already looked at those ones still here. Uh, and uh, protandry, protogyne, the wishes. So incompatibility structure of the flower. 
Yes, uh, OBJ production, you have uh, your hand up. Yeah, so I was saying the, we had left out about wind and water, pollination, wind and water pollination. Wind and water pollination, where did we leave it? We have been looking at okay, wind about flowers. How have we left it? Yeah. it out? Yes, I get, I get you now. Okay, uh, thank you uh, for getting me. Okay, I think um, that is very clear. So we can continue. So this is a question uh, which was brought and uh, it was, it is a good, actually it is a very good uh, question. And then uh, Ms. Gana is saying that uh, uh, teacher, you please write down the answers for me. I want to study them. Uh, I don't know what you mean by I should write the answers. The answers are already in this, uh, in this handout. The answers, they are, they are the very answers which we have been discussing. Okay. These are the very answers that we have been discussing. So, um, Writing them down, we will be wasting a lot of time. We just need to pay attention. And then um, going forward, we can now look at uh, fertilization. Uh, fertilization, now this part of fertilization, uh, in some, in many schools, they skip it after looking at modifications of flowers to prevent self pollination they just go straight to the seeds and, and the fruits. Um, but of, of course, in also some schools, we actually do handle fertilization at once because by now you, you, the knowledge of, of flour is still fresh, okay, in your head. And so it would be better that we also study fertilization at once so that you understand it. And then Isabella is saying that teacher water is an agent of pollination, but I don't know the characteristics of water pollinated plants. Uh, I don't know, uh, have you heard of water being an agent of pollination? I don't know, uh, maybe yeah. you're confusing it with the agents of dispersal, CD dispersal. Are you talking about uh, agents of dispersal or agents of pollination? Of pollination, because at school they gave us that wind is an agent of pollination, water is an agent of pollination. Okay, uh, I'm pleased you'd share with us. Uh, how how does water promote uh, pollination in this case? They only gave they gave it to us as an agent, but they didn't give us the characteristics of water pollinated flowers. Okay, let me hear from some members so that they can give us more information, and then we learn about uh, how water. Uh, yes, Ashaba. Okay, let me choose. Yes, OBJ, OBJ. Uh, what would you say? Was, okay, if if water if water comes, uh, uh, we can't hear you very well. By saying if water comes, then it and it okay. The the plants are in water, then the Okay. Um, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Is there any other person among the members here that was given water as an agent of pollination? Please raise your hand so that I clarify this. If there is anyone who was given uh, in their school uh, water as an agent of pollination, I don't want you to confuse it with agents of dispersal 
because we have a seed and fruit dispersal. I want you to be sure that you are given water as an agent of pollination, not dispersal. Okay. I'm um, seeing Jovia and Deborah. Deborah, what did they tell you at school? Deborah? What did they tell you at school or Nora? Uh, what about Jovia? Jovia Pavin, what did they tell you at school? Excuse Jovia? me, sir. Yes. Excuse me, sir. Please go on and tell us. Female got to fight. Okay. Okay, uh, please go on, go on. You are telling us about female gamete fight. Uh -huh. hmm? I was asking how it's pronounced. I don't know how that's what it's pronounced. Yes, yeah, it is female gamete fight. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, I think uh, let me clarify this. Uh, let me clarify this. Now, I want you to listen to me carefully. Now, uh, for me, according to me, uh, and I want you to quote me well, uh, you tell uh, maybe your teacher or who, and you tell them that there is a teacher who is called uh, Boomba Patrick. Uh, he told us that uh, water shouldn't be included as an agent of pollination. And these are the reasons which I'm giving. Now, you must know that life, as in organisms, they started in water. Okay? Like, um, all because most of the living organisms that stay on land, they were first in water. And when they were carrying out fertilization, it is the water that would enable them to transfer gametes, that is the, the sperm and eggs. The sperms, they would flow using water to reach the egg for fertilization to occur. And that's why we are learning about pollination before we, we, we learn about fertilization. And if you can see here, uh, the slide which I'm from running was about pollination, and now I'm going to fertilization. You get it? Uh, now, uh, this is the, the reason. Um, okay, Isabella, okay, before I give my, my point, Isabella has gotten some information. Uh, from the internet, which says that plants that are water pollinated usually have small, inconspicuous male flowers that release uh, lots of pollen grains and drift in water where they are caught by large feathery stigma of male flowers. Pollen can also float on the water surface, drifting until it contacts flowers. And then Nolan is saying that you are breaking. I think Nolan, it is your network which is breaking. Now, I want you to, to listen to me carefully. Uh, even from what you are from posting on the internet. Now, in water, um, we didn't need any agents of pollination because all organisms actually that still depend on water for fertilization, they don't have pollen grains, no. They don't have pollen grains, they have sperm and egg. Whichever organism that still depends on water for fertilization, they have sperm and eggs. And sperms are able to swim in water. But as organisms evolved from water to come on land, 
that's when they evolved features like pollen grains. And then because the pollen grains, uh, they come and germinate on the stigma, which grows a pollen tube that delivers the sperm inside the female, that is inside the ovary of the female flower. I don't know whether you're getting me. Eh? Eh, so um, whichever organism that still stays in water, they have sperm and egg. Actually, when you're looking at plants, because it is the plants, we have what we call primitive plants or lower plants, uh, which may include um, the moss. If you have done a classification, you must have said about the moss and the liverworts. The moss are those most small plants which are normally found around the water tanks. That is like a green carpet. Those are moss. Those moss, they don't have flowers, never. And the reason is why we call them primitive is because they still depend on water for fertilization. And they are able to produce sperm, which swim towards the egg that are found on the small, small leaves of the moss. And that's why when you come to the higher plants, uh, you cannot talk of water as an agent of pollination. Okay? And I think for some of you, if by any chance you're saying that the teacher gave it to you, you could be confusing it with this puzzle of insect, of, of seeds and fruits. Because after pollination and fertilization, we said about seeds and fruits. And after that, we said about uh, dispersal mechanisms. Okay? We said about dispersal mechanisms, where we said about uh, self explosive mechanisms, uh, uh, water pollinated, not pollinated, dispersal by water, dispersal by wind. Uh, and then someone is saying that you can't hear me normally. I don't know whether it is the case for everyone, but I'm seeing my network is very, very clear. And I'm sure everyone is able to hear me well. Okay. I don't know whether you guys have understood my explanation. So I don't expect water to be used uh, as, uh, to be placed under agents of pollination. Okay. Uh, is there any other question concerning this? Because I'm, according to the time, I, 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 don't, I can't go on further to explain fertilization now because we are left with about four minutes. So is there anyone with any question concerning pollination before we can end this lesson? So if you have any question concerning uh, pollination, please raise your hand and you ask so that I can clarify everything uh, in detail. Is there any other person with any question? Uh, yes, Sharina. Uh, Sharina. Excuse me. Yes. I just want to know to know more about adaptions of wind pollinated flowers. Okay, uh, thank you for that question. Now, uh, what you must know is an adaptation should be a structure that uh, possessed by an organism that will yeah, okay. enable it to perform its work well. Now, here we are looking at wind pollinated flowers. Now, which particular structures that do these flowers have that enable them to undergo wind pollination very well? That is what should be at the back of your mind. I repeat, you should, when you're looking at adaptation, for example, of wind pollinated flowers, you should be looking at those particular structures that these wind pollinated flowers have that enable them to undergo wind pollination or to be pollinated by wind. And one of them is having a feathery stigma, which can trap feathery stigma, which can trap 
pollen grains from the wind, among others, is having very long filaments that hang out the anther heads that exposes them to the wind, so that wind can easily blow away the pollen grains. You see that? So those should be among uh, the answers that you should never miss. Uh, is there any other question before we end this class? Uh, then Ms. Gana says that teacher last time you gave us an exercise of, of uh, dichotomous key, but I'm unable to find the plants so that, so what should we do? Uh, if you can't get the plants, you can always get even if there are insects around your home and you try out. Otherwise, if there's no question, uh, you've been a nice class. Bye-bye and enjoy yourselves. Goodbye. Uh, for now. Bye. Thank you, teacher. Bye. Thank you, teacher, for Bye. teaching us. Bye. May God bless you. Bye, Bye teacher. Thank you for the lesson. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Uh, learners, we have some communication for you. Uh, lessons are ending this week. And next week, we shall be having exams. However, we are requesting you to, yes, Mirembe, Mirembe, you have a question? Mirembe, will you please unmute? Are the exams going to be closely invigilated like, like those we have at our we are, we, are, we are going to we are going to follow this very timetable. We are going to do them online using uh, Google Classroom. But during that time, even though we are going to work on Zoom. Uh, Mirembe, thank you. Stephanie, Stephanie, will you please unmute and ask your question? Teacher. Yes. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you? Teacher, I was requesting yes. that you send us the link for the for joining the Google for joining that the WhatsApp group. The WhatsApp group. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to answer that on WhatsApp group. Then OBJ, OBJ, will you please unmute. Yeah. I was asking the exams about exams. Yes, please. Shall we be using this Microsoft what the Microsoft or this Excel what editing like in a PDF then and we send the work? Uh, the, you will, uh, we are going to use Google Classroom. Depending on the exam, some of them you will use that, some of them you'll use online forms. Hello? Was that clear? Yeah, I did. Mm. Okay, now someone asked us about joining the WhatsApp group. I'm going to share my screen here. I'm going to share my screen to show you what to do. I hope my screen is clear. Yeah, it's clear. Okay, now when you open when you open this, when you open Google, you'll go to Okay, let's do this. You search for Christian school, Christian schools, owners association. So the first option here up, you, you go to, you go to this website or you can even click join e-class. So when you tap e-class, it's going to take you to the page which has all the links. On this page, you find the timetable. Uh, can we see the timetable? Can someone tell me whether yes. the timetable? Mm -hmm. Then after the yes. timetable, uh, let's go down. You have links to the Zoom classes, the class you've just been attending for each of the classes. And then you have the links to the WhatsApp groups. And then also the links to the Google Classroom codes. So here in the address bar, that is the website where that you're supposed to, to open. naxu.org slash join dash e-class. 
and you'll get links to WhatsApp, uh, links to the Google Classroom, and also our timetable. Now, also, I want to remind each of you, please, to go to YouTube, youtube.com. Then in YouTube, please search for Christian, Christian School. Christian School Owners Association. This is the channel on which we are streaming all these lessons. Now, what you're going to, the, the, the exams we are going to have are going to come directly from the lessons we had in this, uh, this phase. So for, for you to revise, go to Christian School Owners Association and please don't forget to subscribe. What are the activities we are going to do? This is the Christian we School Owners Association. Association. So the playlists are here. Uh, this is S2. So we have the S2 playlist. Uh, this is the Senior 2 playlist. The Senior 2 playlist has all the lessons that we've been attending. So I'm requesting you, please, go to the Christian School Owners Association and click subscribe. We are asking for this. So thank you for, for now. Okay, then, uh, Stephanie, your hand is still up. Stephanie, your hand is still up. Okay, then. Bye. Bye for now.